Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is part one of our .NET full stack project. So in the previous video, you have already seen that what we are going to build in this series. And this video is the part one where I will be talking more about the client server architecture because we are going to develop something called as full stack. So we really need a backend. So before even going to starting and creating the APIs, I want to give you a clear idea about what is client server architecture and why do we have a backend and a client client application because by using dotnet right we are make we are creating some web apis okay so before even creating the web apis we should know like what is this web api at least we should have a fundamental idea about what are web apis so to start off things right so here you can see what we have this diagram representation that here we have clients clients are nothing but your web browsers your mobile app your desktop app okay and whatever data you what you see on your mobile web right so you're getting it from a server and that's how the server looks like so we have the web servers the application server and the database server from where you fetch all the data right because whatever data you see on the ui everything is stored somewhere in a db okay and that's how you pull this data from this db and you showcase them in your web browsers mobile app or desktop app so i want to talk more about what is this web api then okay so in this today's world this web api are the backbone of a web because whatever data you see right it's all been transferred to the client with this web api okay so over here if you ask me about what is this api so api is nothing but it stands for application programming interface if you just go on the google and search for api if you just hit enter click on any images so you will get a clear idea okay how what is this api is actually doing if you see any diagram representation so now if anyone asks you about what is api you just have to tell them it is just a set of programming interface for the web okay like for example uh, when you want to book a flight on a website right so the browser makes a request to the to the server of the airline okay so here you can see so it makes a request to the server all right and through the web api you can access the airline database okay so the airline server that returns the information about the flight to the browser which allowing you to book your flight okay so this is how things all work so we can build this web api by using like different technologies like uh, java python ruby php .NET, and so on and not just that uh, everyone have their own various style to develop few things like for example you must have heard this term uh, soap web services rest apis and all that so they all are based on http protocols but uh, communicates in a different way so let's take a look at this client server interaction with web api okay so what happens right your client sends a request so just take an example this is your web of indigo airline okay so you're you're accessing indigo.com and this is what your client has and it requests for a data to the server okay so it will request for a data to the server the api call will happen over here as you can see this web api so what it does right it fetches the data and it it returns so it will fetch the data from the db all the information what are stored in the database of indigo server it fetches and returns back okay and now what it does right this api response is there with the data and the server what it does it just returns it to the client whatever he asked for and with that data you are able to see all the information on your website of indigo.com so now let me talk about uh, what is this rest api then because i have seen a lot of people get confused between web api and rest api okay so web api is nothing but it's just a broader term okay like uh, do not compare it with uh, rest api and web api because web api is something which tells you that that the protocol that allows different application to communicate with each other like over the internet okay so it act as a intermediary like facilitating the exchange of data between uh, various software systems while the rest api which is stands for representational state transfer okay so this is basically a specific architecture okay it's an architectural style for build building the web apis okay so we are going to build a web api by using rest api kind of architecture that's it it's just a way right it's just a way like how you want to transmit your data over the internet okay so in simple term um, a rest api is a type of web api that uh, the highest to a rest architectural principle and i'll talk about that principle in just few in in just a minute okay but before that let's take an example of this like this is one of the famous example what everybody will give you when someone is uh, teaching you about what is web api okay so as you can see right here 
we have a user user is nothing but your client and this client sends a request okay and this request goes via this api okay a client said a api call and this api will go to the application and it will tell them okay this is what the user needs okay and in that return the application will take some time and it will return a response and again that response is taken by the api which is your waiter and it will send it to your user so that user can use it correct so this is how it basically looks like so if you see this guy right so this guy is nothing but a api in front of us now when i say right this is a rest api how can i say that this is going to be a rest api when we will follow a specific pattern okay uh, when i say pattern right what kind of pattern suppose if i want to get the user data so i'll make use of api slash get users okay so i will say suppose if i want to update my menu data so i'll say api slash update okay so let's take an example over here right so again rest api and graphql they both helps you to create a web apis okay but the way they develop right the way they uh, communicates is very different okay so i can tell them this is also helping me to create web api this is also helping me to create a web api but the way they are creating it's a different for example in rest api we have standards which we follow to get to put post delete and patch and you can say right your api it gives you the description kind of data as well like this helps you to get the data this put will help you to update the data post will help you to create some new like users or something in the in the database delete will help you to delete that user and patch will help you to patch a specific record of the user something like that but if you see the example of graphql right again what happens the way we are trying to access data is different so here there is a single post call which we always send and we just try to create a query for example this will also help me to fetch a blog content for example if i want to fetch a blog in rest api what i'll say i'll say api slash get blogs okay but in term of graphql api right we we say we create a query with a post and we say that i need id title content and author of that particular blog so this is how it fetch so both of them what they are doing they are trying to query data okay from the database but the way they are doing it it's two different thing okay so i hope now you will get a fair idea about what is a rest api and what is a web api okay if you still not clear then do mention them in the comment section i'll try to uh, answer your doubts if you have any okay all right so we will be building a rest api okay by using dotnet so let's take an example like how does this rest api look like okay so for example right this is just an clear example which will help you to understand more about what is this stdpi methods like we have get for example if you want to get the post right so this is what it is so it is a url slash post this is a read operation and it reads the collection of the post something like that so here you can see right you will get a clear idea about what we will be building in upcoming videos okay so during the video we will also discuss about how can we document our apis and whatnot by using swagger so that our api endpoint should look like neat and clean and it should be like industry standard so i will be helping you guys to get all those knowledge okay so that's it from this today's video and i hope this was quite helpful for you to understand about what is api what is rest api what are graphql apis and what are those stdp methods and what they actually do okay so in the next video i will be talking about how can we create a new project from scratch okay a uh, due.net application which which will follow the industry way okay i'll not just create a single project and create all the folders and all that so i'll try to follow a clean architecture principle okay and don't worry don't get uh, worried about this term clean architecture and all that i this is a very beginner friendly series so i'll make sure that i'll go slow and once you get the good grip then we will increase the difficulty level gradually okay so that's it from this today's video so see you guys in the next part where we will build the dotnet project from scratch so so happy coding keep learning see you guys in the next one bye bye